Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? So glad you can join us. Grenadian doctor embracing new lease on life after successful kidney transplant in Guyana. This story takes the lead in today's edition of Caribbean Perspective for Friday 23rd July 2021. Details when we return. Did you know that your friends and family can now shop at the Food Fair from anywhere in the world and you can receive here in Grenada? The Food Fair and GrenadaMarket.com now make it possible through secure online shopping and personalized customer service. Simply send your loved ones a list of your preferred items or let them fill an online basket and the items will be available for pickup or delivery. Visit GrenadaMarket.com or thefoodfair.gd today for more details. The new norm. Spread the news. Welcome back. 39-year-old Grenadian doctor Jermaine Bristol was almost out of medical options and finances when Dr. Kishore Prasad and her team from Georgetown Public Hospital's Kidney Transplant Department was recommended to her as a solution. Now, more than a month after completing a successful kidney transplant surgery, the mother of one is ready to embrace her new lease on life with passion and enthusiasm. HGP's Kendall Richmond spoke with the elated doctor on Tuesday. On Monday, the Georgetown Public Hospital's Nephrology and Kidney Transplant Department celebrated a milestone once considered impossible for Guyana. While it is not the first time the corporation has recorded successful kidney transplant procedures, it was the first time the hospital conducted a kidney transplantation on a non-national. As such, the atmosphere at the country's main medical referral center on Monday was one of pride and joy as the Minister of Health, Dr. Frank Antony, joined in the celebration of this feat. However, such an accomplishment would not have been attained without the woman who made a decision to leave her country in search of a second chance to have a healthy life, a possibility she entrusted to Guyanese doctors. Who is this woman? She's 39-year-old medical doctor Jermaine Bristol, a Grenadian national. Bristol sat down with IT News on Tuesday and reflected on her life prior to receiving the life-saving medical intervention while sharing her aspirations for the future. The mother of one was diagnosed with kidney failure in 2012 at just 30 years of age while she was studying medicine in the United Kingdom. As a medical student, she clearly understood the seriousness of her condition. However, she did not allow it to daunt her spirit. When I received my diagnosis, I knew I couldn't change it. Um, so all I had to do was learn to live with it. So that was the only choice I had. Is either I give up or I learn to live with it. Immediately following her diagnosis, Bristol started dialysis treatment, which she continued for over nine years until accessing the surgery. Dialysis is the clinical purification of blood as a substitute for the normal function of the kidney. Not only was the dialysis treatment physically taxing, it was also financially draining, Bristol said. So since I returned from the UK, having to go to that one unit, there was a lot of times when machines were down supplies did not arrive in time and I had opportunities where there were times when I had to go to Trinidad because I did not have a choice. It's either I went without treatment and ended up in ICU or I traveled so that I could get treatment. According to Bristol, she has spent, I quote, a lot of money on plane tickets, end of quote. But after struggling with the cost of dialysis and the side effects of the treatment itself, a glimmer of hope was presented when a team of doctors visited Grenada to perform AV fistula surgeries on dialysis patients. AV fistula surgery involves sewing together an artery and a vein, usually in the wrist or elbow area, to create a larger, tougher vein that can tolerate multiple needle punctures that are needed for dialysis. After four unsuccessful attempts at the procedure, doctors began exploring the possibility of kidney transplant as a solution of ending Bristol's agony. But while Bristol was not against transplantation, she was not expecting her donor to be her 19-year-old son, Gerard Bristol. Being a doctor and being a mother, the first thing that came to mind was possible complications of surgery and these things. And I remember actually asking him, are you sure you want to go through this? And he got so mad. He was like, why wouldn't I want to give my mother a kidney? 
Bristol's doctor recommended Dr. Kishore Prasad, head of the Georgian Public Hospital Nephrology and Kidney Transplant Department, as the best man to facilitate such a surgery, and the rest is history. On June 14, Bristol underwent the surgery successfully at the Georgian Public Hospital, and both she and her son are recovering well. The woman is grateful that she is able to return to a normal life after suffering for so long. In praising the kidney transplant department of the hospital, Bristol vowed to recommend a local team to other renal failure patients. I intend to go back and try my best to see how many patients we can get this to work out for. Um, we already have plans in place to help patients raise funds and stuff like that to assist them so that they can come and get this done. For the HTP Nightly News, Kendall Richmond. No lockdown is on the horizon, assures Health and Wellness Minister Barbados, Lieutenant Jeffrey Bostick. Over the past two weeks, COVID-19 cases have been in the double digits and authorities have raised concerns about growing clusters. We are nowhere near a lockdown. Lockdown is a last resort. And we will gradually, and we have started that obviously with the curfew and other things, to increase our um, public health interventions and non-public health interventions sorry, non-pharmaceutical interventions that we have been introducing, like the curfew and the limitation on numbers and so on. The numbers you're seeing, and we discussed this in the AOC, if you start with 40 positives on one day, we anticipate a certain number of cases as a result of that. Why? Because we've been doing aggressive contact tracing and we've been testing large numbers for the last several days, the numbers would have been close to up, surpassing 1,000. So, yes, we anticipated that we would get cases, and that's not an issue. Uh, we are seeing one or two cases coming up that are not connected to the major clusters, and that is concern for us. It means that we have a bit more work to do. But at this point in time, we are not contemplating a lockdown. <laughs> especially if there are strong winds. Rooftops and other debris are often blown about and can cause great damage. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. The epidemic curve, which shows the rate of increase or decrease of positive COVID-19 cases within Trinidad and Tobago, is beginning to flatten. Kimberly D'Souza of TTT News has more. While the epidemic curve has begun to flatten, epidemiologist Dr. Avery Hines has noticed a slight increase in the number of positive cases over the last few weeks. He said from the middle of May to now, the figures have decreased, but from week 26, a new trend was seen. 26 and 27 are approximately the same height, 20, uh, 27 and 28, again, approximately the same height. In fact, there's a slight, a very slight increase from one week to the next. 1% in one week, uh, nearly 6% in the next week. So we're looking at that again. That's the same sort of plateau that we're speaking about, the same flattening out instead of continuing that downward trend. Dr. Hines revealed that the rate at which the number of positive COVID-19 cases has decreased over the past few weeks has slowed. Now, this is as a result, in part, of the increased movement that we would have seen beginning with the bringing the construction sector back out, bringing everybody else back out, and the additional interaction that's happening in the population since we've begun this increased level of movement. While he said there is a risk for an increase in cases instead of a plateau, he urged the public to continue to follow the public health measures and take the vaccines that are available to them. The more people get vaccinated, more quickly we increase the proportion of vaccinated individuals in the population, the slower that potential increase may be, the lower the risk of a, a, a sharp increase because there will be fewer people who are susceptible. He reminded the public that while the food sector is reopened, they should not gather as this will determine whether or not we will see a rapid change in this new trend. Kimberly D'Souza, 
TTT News. Mihail Chokski says he wants international agencies to guarantee his safety when he returns to answer fraud charges in his native India. ABS's Jamie J. Rogier reports. The 62-year-old diamond mogul says he fears for his life after claiming men of Indian descent kidnapped and took him to Dominica in May. They were very rough and they were even talking that they could kill me, they could do this, they could do that. So of course I'm now very, very scared to go back to India. Chaksi is challenging extradition proceedings to send him back to face allegations that he defrauded India's Punjab National Bank. He tells ABS News his failing health has prevented him from returning to India to clear his name. Chaksi believes a United Nations body could help ensure Indian law enforcers treat him fairly. I will seek international NGOs or uh, international human rights and everybody to take care whenever I'm interrogated, wherever I'm interrogated, that I'm not handled brutally. This kidnap was a very, very heinous crime. Meanwhile, the Antiguan and Barbadian CIB citizen says he never thought such a crime could occur in this country. He says he's planning to improve his security detail. Jimmy J. Roche, ABS News. CBC News out of Toronto outlines Haiti's new Prime Minister Ariel Henry is faced with a daunting task of running a country dealing with political turmoil after the president's assassination, rising violent crime, poverty and overcoming the pandemic. But despite the challenges, observers say international actors should stop meddling in Haiti's affairs. As they paid respect to their assassinated leader, former President Jovenel Moïse, today Haitians pronounced Ariel Henry the country's new prime minister after almost two weeks of competing claims to power. He's a neurosurgeon, named by Moïse as leader before his assassination, but challenged by others until yesterday. It will be a daunting job to bring order to a Haiti overrun by gangs where kidnappings and street violence consume the country, where political institutions are paralyzed and society struggles to overcome poverty and a deepening pandemic. Squabbles among political parties, business groups and NGOs over who should rule lock progress. He is going to be tasked with trying to keep this country is stable or at least not to fall deeper into instability. And right now, he's not really getting any support from his call for reconciliation or some sort of a dialogue. Others say the international community has not helped with decades of meddling in Haiti's affairs. Just in the past two weeks, foreign capitals have flip-flopped over which leader to support. Ottawa also seemed unsure at first, with global affairs officials apparently backing different claims to power. It would be better, says Caribbean politics expert Kevin Edmonds, to let Haiti make its own decisions. Let it evolve on its own, good, bad or ugly. Let Haitians make the mistakes. Let Haitians own the processes and learn from it to go forward. Because what we keep seeing is when you have this intervention or playing kingmaker in Haiti, is that it ends badly. A new election is set for September. But few believe that will happen given the current mess or that it would bring prolonged stability. Sasha Petrosik, CBC News, Toronto. Hubbard's big promotion is back. Live free for one year. Spend $50 or more in any Hubbard's department and receive a chance to win. Big prizes every month. Property or vehicle insurance for one year. Free internet, cable and data for one year. Free fuel for one year. Free cooking gas for one year. Free electricity for one year. Free drinks for one year. Extra cash account and the big free groceries for one year. Promotion runs from April 1st to September 30th, 2021. Live free for one year with Hubbard's in association with Sol Gas, Flow, Grenadian General Insurance, Carib Brewery, Coca-Cola, Grenada Bottling Company, Grenlec, Communal Cooperative Credit Union, Dutch Lady Milk, Promo, Danny and Supreme. Terms and conditions apply. I am Eddie Frederick, wishing you a restful weekend. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please continue to log on to CaribbeanPerspective.com for more daily news and more.